Guys, thank you so much for, for joining us right now. I'm here with Julian Gordon. Thank you so much for, for sitting down here with us. Thank you, it's a great pleasure to be here. No problem, no yeah. problem. We're what a great show. Block, thank you. We're at Block Show Singapore, yeah. and Julian just got off stage yeah. and explaining to the world why blockchain is gonna change the world and how. So, let's dive into that. But okay. before we dive into that, I wanna do two things. I wanna yeah, do two yeah. things. Okay. We, have a, we have questions from our live audience. All right. At the end of the panel, we're gonna come back and we're gonna pull up the questions from DLive right there. Again, sponsored by Lena. Okay. Yeah, but first, me. <laughs> <laughs> I should talk. Did I see? <laughs> so, yeah. what first got you interested? Back in the days, when you were looking at the ecosystem, the whole ecosystem, what was that aha moment, that moment that really made you gravitate towards, hold on here, we've got something new. Yeah, well, I've been working in technology for 30 plus years, right? <laughs> I, I know I look You don't look that old, I can never tell you. Right, so. But, uh, <laughs> so, I've always been interested in new technology. I worked in the dot com, in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the internet age, I worked for Sun Microsystems, I worked in technology, I worked in FinTech, right. what we used to call technology in financial services. So, I've worked in that for years. <laughs> Um, and uh, I've always been interested in new technology, and we've okay. seen many waves of very interesting technology, uh, but we're always waiting for something that actually makes a significant difference, right? And I think when I saw, well, first obviously it was Bitcoin, 2008, the financial crisis, which was, yes, it was an interesting time. It was so. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, 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 I was interested in Bitcoin, I kept an eye on it, a lot of my friends were involved in that, right? Okay. Uh, and I got involved a little bit later when it became like business blockchain, which is my really? kind of my, my you didn't area. Take it, you, you didn't see it from the from the dinners and you didn't gravitate towards it then or you just put it on your radar only? No, not put it on my radar, but I, I was very much, I was involved. I'm, my challenges in life, I'm interested in everything. Yeah. From history to, to everything, right? So this Absolutely. is one of my one of my and this is one of this was definitely in the in the, in the in the in the top top topics of interest, right? Yeah. So uh, no, and I think uh, you know, no, it was definitely definitely of interest. And obviously once you had Bitcoin, which is a currency, and that's obviously interesting in its own right, right? right and right. how, you know, some of the ideas behind that and why Satoshi why she did that, right? Uh -huh. she is, whoever, whoever, I like that. Whoever she is. I like so, that. You know, <laughs> so uh, you know, we, we, you know, very good ideas, right? And then I think the, 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 the genius of Vitalik and the Ethereum and then putting a smart contract and making that right. into a world computer, right? right? Even it. though the challenges, that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And then saying, well, actually, um, which is one way, that's, that's, that's the, and, and, and that has obviously some challenges around proof of value, you know, a proof of, exactly. you know, in terms of energy and, and some securities and, and Ethereum. What's the true just, value, what's the security, right? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the true value? Well, the fact you have to burn electricity to do, to do that and that kind of thing. So there are some challenges with that. Absolutely. But, you know, Amazing that stuff, um, and then uh, you know having this permission blockchain where you can work within like, within technology and within society, within governments, and with you know for many good causes, you can pull a number of, of, of groups together who are not anonymous, who know each other, Absolutely. but maybe have you know conflicting interests, mm -hmm. can work together, right. and you're creating a platform. That's great. And then the concept, also the other thing is that you know when we worked on the early internet, we thought this was going to be decentralized, right? <laughs> Right. It's, it's kind of, but in fact, it isn't decentralized. It's, it's true. Like, exactly. When you look at some of them, yeah. they, they need a, the consensus. So it's not really truly decentralized. Yeah. There's a couple of folks still sitting down and saying, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And I'm curious, do you think we'll ever truly get to the point of true decentralization? Yes. So whenever you say when you get, get something, it's like, what does that mean? Like, when I leave this place, I will say I sat in a chair, but I won't forget, I remember what it was because I have a model of a chair, right? Right, right. So, right, so right, people have right, a model right. of what decentralization, okay. but every model is slightly different, so I don't know what you mean by decentralized. So okay. yes, obviously we are all decentralized as human beings wandering around, thank goodness, well, but, well, but in other ways we're not decentralized, right? We all, right. We all have the same, we're all in the same society. I remember mm -hmm. calling, you know, I know people call their sons, they thought they had this unique name and then found out when they first went to school at four, half the class had the same name. <laughs> so we all think we're unique, but we're, we're, we're in society and we, are, we have many influences. Yeah. So yeah, I think decentralization will happen, mm -hmm. um, and will happen in increasing. And technology is helping that, right? right. Uh, and it's and if we fit for purpose, right. uh, but I think that's going to be a, a, an emerging thing. But I I don't know what you mean by you know I don't know what to rate it means fully decentralization because it's we, good to have society again, right. to come together and make decisions about things as well, right? Right. But yes, the more decentralized that it can be, uh, the better it is. For competition, for people making their living, for people getting access to to, uh, to the assets of, of, of the world, for people getting involved in renewables, whatever they want to do, I think right. that having that ability to, to do stuff, I think, is great. 
and then when we find out later that it's not great to do that and that you should have one person in charge. Yeah, Just yeah. joking. Well, actually, actually there is, in, in technology, you know, I worked a lot in technology, you have this uh, uh, concept with centralized, decentralized decision making, like within IT departments. Okay. Sometimes you have the IT part in the middle making all the decisions, and then the, the department says, well, they're so slow. Mm -hmm. And then so it all then creeps out, these guys get the power and start making those decisions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from a decentralized perspective. And then there's some, someone makes a mistake and they go, oh no, we need to bring it in suddenly, right? So, <laughs> and, and then there's, a, you know, there's lots of conflicting, a, a lot of conflicting. Step. So control and decent are, are conflicting, there's, they're, they're both you know, useful, mm -hmm. but getting both is what we want, right? And that, that's, maybe yeah. that's what blockchain and other things can do. Okay, yeah. well that's interesting because we've listed some hot topics here yeah. that you should find relatable, it's cool, yeah. right? Um, and we want to get your general take on a few of these uh, these topics. Okay. Basic ones. We yeah. talked about decentralization. Yeah. We just covered that. Yeah. Yeah. Privacy. What's your general take on privacy? It's a good thing. So I think I think, <laughs> I think you know the, um, actually I, I, I take this from someone else who said you know this. like in Europe it's the pitchfork moment at the Bastille right. right. The, the people have said they're fed up their data being stolen, their yes. passwords being stolen, other people using their data, you know, and the, the whole concept that you know. If it's free, you know, you're the product, right? Right. No, we didn't come in there. That, right, that's that's, right, that, right. that's, that's not, not what I signed that, up that, for. That's what I didn't sign up for. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, privacy is, is, is very, 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 very important. So I think uh, we have like, self-sovereign identity where you can keep your identity yourself, right? And all your, uh, you know, like we always use the example. So if you go to the bar in the US, it seems to be 21 for drinking. I never understand that. Anyway. <laughs> but you, you have to go and you, when you show a bouncer, you show him the, the card, right? Credentials. Credentials, yeah. He only needs to you're over 21. Right. But in fact, he has your picture, he has your address, he has all that information, which he does not need to know. Absolutely. He doesn't need to know where you live. Absolutely. So uh, you should be able to do that where, and that's what these proofs are and self-sovereign identity, where you can just go and show your identity, say, I am a US citizen. They don't have to go back to the US government. I, I, have, I have a good credit history. They don't need to have all your information from the back right. past. Right. You should be able to have that information and control. Your medical records, you should control your medical records. Absolutely. You should be the person that has that. You should be able to manage that. Right. You feel the same the technology the happening? Huh. Huh? You, do you feel that, that that same strength when it comes to your I, when you became the product of internet uh, companies? Do you feel that same strength that I should have the control over it as well? Not just so. I'm, I received. Yeah, hear yeah. me out on this. Yeah. You used my service. I yeah. received unique information about you from that from that service yeah. as a product. Do I have the right because I pulled that information from you? I was able to obtain that information that you may not even know about your behaviors, your likes and patterns. Yeah. Does that give me the right to have that information because it's a byproduct? Or it's still from me, that's still a pr the old days, right? I work, I shovel the head, and that's my dollar that I should get at the end of the day. And I'm responsible for everything that I did. I think it's up to the society and individuals to decide that. I can't decide for other people, right? Mm, so uh, I think, I think uh, you know, it's like people. If you give me airline miles, I'll tell you everything about me. <laughs> so, so people are people are people you are have valuable that to that. You have that choice. So if you have that choice, yes. Choice. So you have that choice, right? You know, I don't mind giving my. If I get, you know, you know, if I get if I get bonus points or okay. you know, two for one, you know, you give me this. But uh, but I have to know why you're, you're taking that information. Right. And so of course, you know, your mother knows more information, but you know, she's allowed to know that. So there are other people. There are Absolutely. All, all people who know more information. But yeah, if it's bought in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a dishonest way through a different, that's obviously not good, right? Right. And we should be able to, to, to determine that. The individual should be able to determine, you know, turn up and dial, depending, you know, some yeah. people are centric, some people are, you know, uh, you know uh, <laughs> extroverts, other people are introverts, people, people right. have different feelings and different uh, grades, right? Well, now we're talking about different sectors. We spoke about the airline industry yeah. quickly, right? And how can they, they can attract someone immediately getting the information. Yeah. What are the other sectors you think that should, will be radically, trans, can be radically transformed um, using Hyperledger? Leveraging hyper leveraging blockchain technology. So, so technology. yeah, so we're 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 in every different sector. So we always say it's financial services, healthcare, and supply chain. Ah. Those are the kind of three kind of. Financial but then, services, but then, but then, transportation as well. So the airlines. Uh, you know, I, we have NASA did something. They were doing aware, air, you know air traffic control systems. Uh, we have uh, you know the plastic, saving the plastics of the seas. You know refugees. Every single government, everyone is looking at land leases. It's actually every different that's sector that people actually, is looking at. You know, you just pinged on to something very interesting. Yeah. We have this massive load of plastic, yeah. this floating island right now. 
what if we knew from day one exactly who was responsible for that? Yes, exactly. So you know, you know, if you, so, so that's that goes back to the traceability of, right. of goods. So supply chain, you can provide traceability, right? right? With IoT devices, we have many examples of that. Mm -hmm. Companies like Walmart are doing it, then small you right. know, uh, uh, coffee producers are doing it, everyone is, is doing that. So when you scan it, you know that where it came from. Absolutely. And obviously when you scan that piece of plastic in the middle IBM of the sea, very, yeah. you will know where that comes from. Right. And there's also other ways about recycling, you know, honest recycling, tracking it, making mm -hmm. sure it's not being dumped in other countries, yeah. carbon credits. Exactly. Carbon credits I was just gonna ask hot. you, I was just yes. gonna ask you about yeah. your, your your take on carbon credits. And have you seen any companies implementing blockchain? So the corporate corporation can take advantage of the carbon credits. Yes, I see. I, I just, so I have, we have lots of production systems. Right. I don't know if anyone's in production. That I think they're one I know in Southeast Asia that's coming. I know lots of people are doing that. Okay. Uh, and guys, I know, are you hearing this? This is good <laughs> intel right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you guys are live. This is good information. So here. a lot of people, a lot of organisations are looking at that because uh, I, I can tell you, I, I, actually, as a fintech, about four people have approached me about what they're doing uh, and that they want to do stuff about carbon credits. Really? So I think carbon credits are becoming a hotter and hotter. And it's all about, and there's many different ways, because you know, when you mean green and carbon credit, it means different things in different countries, Absolutely. right? Some people say, it's green, which means I've only got a little bit of coal, right? right. And other people, so there's <laughs> also the ways, there's a whole carbon, so it's, yeah, it's taking carbon credits, it's securitizing those as assets, then can then be sold in the markets, and then downstream, so if you've got a, wind mar a wind windmill uh, uh, farm in uh, the Philippines, you mm -hmm. can immediately get credits, sell those excess, it also goes to the energy industry, the grid, right? So you yourself can sell stuff back. Absolutely. So there is a whole ecosystem being done. There, and there's so a lot of challenges. We know that there are a lot of challenges. But in, in the end, it starts there. small. So there are some good proof of concepts, Absolutely. pilots, and I see some stuff actually happening today. But of course, there's a politics of it as well, right? Which is What's a the most thing. exciting thing? Well, yeah, politics. We talk yeah. about nuclear energy and the politics behind yeah, that yeah, in yeah, another yeah. day. Yeah, exactly. But, but um, what's the most exciting project? It doesn't have big or small that you've seen in 2019 and you're excited about for 2020? Wow, that's a difficult one. Like when you, you, you're you actually at home, you're having a glass of vino and you're sitting like, wow, I can't wait to see that project. Well, actually, one I, I talked about there, which is probably not that very exciting uh, for some people, but it's the right, law courts, right. the law courts in China. So okay. the Beijing, you have the Beijing Internet Court, the Hangzhou Internet Court, and you have uh, the notary systems. They have developed a chain, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, when you uh, submit your, your documents uh, uh, to the Internet Court, uh, they hash that document and put it on a, a blockchain, which then could be seen publicly, okay. which means that you know the documents that you submitted are the right. documents that are then shown in the case, okay. and then can be used afterwards. That, wow. very simple. Wow. 50 million documents they have at the yeah. moment. I know they've done about 1,200 cases at the Beijing uh, courts. We have lots of things like that. We have China Construction Bank have developed a, and China Mention Bank, large letter of credit internal system. They're doing billions of dollars of letters of credits. Messaging, what? no tokens, no coins. Really? But this, this information that is, 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 is happening today. We have lots of very, I think the most exciting this year is production and people having returns uh, from that perspective on, on, on those. The actual implementation. We went through our hype cycle. Yeah. We went through our, I don't know, let's see what this is about. We went through the crazy hype. We went through what I call the marketing phase. Unfortunately, yeah. the marketing phase had a lot of um, charlatans in it to bring awareness to the platform yes. and to the technology. Yeah. And now we're, ha now we're in, the, in the process of more implementation in a, in a rudimentary yeah. scale. So, so permission chains is happening today. Yeah. Definitely, we have some been going on for nearly two years. It's in production and they're refining, getting better and better and better. And of course, the next thing they talk about is interoperability between these two different chains and there are different models. And of course, the governance of, of people working together is, is, is the challenge. Okay. There's many issues being worked through, but the maturity is, 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 is definitely growing. Okay. I think China, uh, it's where I, 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 I can't talk to, to other region. places. Uh, yeah. I was born in Hong Kong, which maybe is, 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 okay, well, this is my mother. Okay, well, this explains a little bit So okay. it was just, I was born <laughs> it was your mother. <laughs> it was my mother, exactly. So I was born here. Uh, I was, I, actually, I was brought up in England, okay. and I came back here, and I, I just love this part of the world. I love okay. China, I love India, I love Southeast Asia. It's just a diverse uh, community, uh, such a go, go, get kind of a culture here. Do you lots think of, lots of people from North America, lots of people, everyone, everyone seems to mingle here. It's great. I love it. So yeah. do you think that this part of the world, Asia, do you think they have more of an advantage um, implementing blockchain in the Western world, traditional, the traditional Western world? 
So I would say everywhere is equally capable, right? Right. Uh, yes, I'm not going to not going to say that, but I would say the, the, <laughs> the opportunities uh, in China we know because uh, you know they're there and that, right. there has been a, 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 a focus uh, on that, and they weren't so distracted as you said by other things that that, that, exactly. that, that, that did occur before. So I, I think that that, 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 that definitely, um, and some countries like the. The, the, uh, the Bank of Cambodia has a lot of unbanked. They've put a banking system in there using right. one of our projects, the ROA. So you wouldn't do that somewhere like, actually, you wouldn't do that in China because you have Alipay that works beautifully already today. And, <laughs> and actually, if you go to lots of shops, you have five ways, 10 ways to pay, it's, right? It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Even in the back of a cab yeah, in yeah, Singapore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's 30 different ways to pay. <laughs> exactly. So, so some, some problems don't necessarily need to be solved now. Right. Um, but yeah, I think there is, I think this is a great part of the world. I think. Europe is great. North America is doing South America. Mm. We see stuff down in, see uh, in, okay. in. We see it. We see it everywhere. Dubai. Yes. I don't want to be biased uh, in any way, but. Oh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious about this one. This one, I'm a little bit more interested. Yeah. Your uh, idealistic impulses. You were uh, mentioned somewhere to say you had idealistic impulses. Is that umbrella? for just all of the companies, all of the tech, all of the implementation that uh, you, you can think about under technology. Is that where that, that, that jumps from? Or is idealistic Being impulses? idealistic, I, I, I'm sure you characterize me. I, I'm, I, I believe very much in ethics. You know, I, I always think that you should do to others as Absolutely. you do to the others. And I always, if someone's bad to you, you should always understand why they're bad with you rather than blame them. Empathy. You know, I have, I have truly empathy and, and you know, I, I want to be empathetic and humble, right? So uh, ideals, yes, ideals is that we all should, you know, do good Does things. Does it get you in trouble sometimes? <laughs> Does it get you in trouble at times? Well, it makes me less rich than I probably am at that, times. That, that, <laughs> so, but that's, that's, the, that's, but that's not a problem. But that's not a problem. That's not a problem because that's not what we're here for, right? So uh, you know, if that was all we're here for, it's, it's we're only here for a short period. Maybe I'm further in that period than most people. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I, 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 uh, I you know, no, uh, no, I, idealism is good. Um, uh, it's good to have an ideal, and then it's also good to be practical. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's funny that you just mentioned um, morals and being rich and having morals. Yeah. That's been a topic around circles recently. Yeah. And that the, uh, when you look at the vast majority, and I hate to, you know, lump a lot in there, yeah. but the vast majority seems to feel that the minority wealthy um, are, not empath are, are not that empathetic and don't have as many morals as we like because the dollar changes your moral perspective of society. And I find that challenging. So extremely challenging. We have had a challenge, and um, you know, I'm not here to really talk about politics. But the no, 2008 crisis did cause uh, challenges, and we have had with a, with a flood of free money for many people. People, Absolutely. some people have advantage, others don't. So there has been a widening. That, that's a fact. There's a widening of the, uh, and, and and that is not good. So that's part decentralization, giving people more opportunity. So I think that that. that that is not a good thing, right. uh, and uh, but uh, you know, and we have some challenges in the world at the moment. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm totally optimistic fixed. that those things can, can be fixed. Yes, definitely. No, but I, so, I agree, and I don't know many of that one percent, so I really can't tell you. But I, mean, you know, I was going to say, have, I, have, have, you know, I was going to go there. With that, but I said, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. No, no, no. So we we didn't, we didn't touch on blockchain-based voting and how yeah. important that could be in the boardroom. Yes, and how important that can be in other applications. Can you? Can yeah. you so yeah, so so I, so I think uh, you know any kind of uh, transparency right. uh, uh, in anything, right? Mm -hmm. And that basically for you to understand the product you're buying, the, the financial, everything is good, right? And obviously, right. you know, elections are definitely have to be transparent. They have to be above board, right? So to have that ability is good. Right. Uh, um, I've seen it. I haven't seen it in the. You know, people have talked about that having election systems. Right. And I think it may be done in one or two places. Sure. Um, uh, but yeah, and uh, I've seen that more in, in the business. So for shares, right. for stocks, where okay. so stockholders, you have a, a, a let's do that by blockchain. Right. Um, and that's because also they have to, if, if you think about it, if you own a stock and you're actually owned, in, if somebody in Europe owns it, you have to apply to GDPR. There's all kinds of hey. more complicated things that will go Absolutely. in there. And okay. that, that technology. But some people may say that it's good to have a paper-based system because, you know, but I think blockchain is the paper yeah. basis, right? Yeah, that that so, is truly what so, that so, is. So yeah, so, so, yeah I, I think I think it's it's a great idea. Okay. Uh, I think you had to step careful steps to do something like that because it does. It's so important to society from from a from a, from a general elections, right? Right. But for you know, no, absolutely, it's great because okay. it's immutable. It's down there. It's transparent. Uh, obviously, they won't have privacy as well there. So how do you overlay the privacy? Exactly. I don't want to know what you voted for, yeah, or exactly. maybe you don't want to know what I voted for. That's so, where you know, it gets a little challenging. That's yeah. where it gets a bit challenging. So. It, 
actually all this, we're about the technology. I, our company, our, our non-profit organization, and the Linsman, we develop technology to be used by everyone. We bring the smartest people to come together to develop that technology. Right. So everyone else can do that, you know, build that stuff on top of that. Oh, but that fun. includes governance, that includes all kinds of things, which is, which is complicated. That's about people and society and businesses. So, that, that, so that's how can our audience, yeah. Yeah. how can the guys in the chat follow up with you on more questions? find out about certifications, yep. you're laying out the pathway for the future yep. and building out technology for folks to take advantage of in the essence of Linux. Yep. And how can they reach out to the organization? How do they reach out to the organization? So, 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 so you can reach, so our technology is free, right? So wiki, W-I-K-I dot hyperledger.org. Okay. You get a Linux Foundation ID and then you can have access to our collaborative environment, all our, all our, our code, uh, everything is, is free gratis. We have many different code bases for everything and we have some, uh, it's open source so people come and develop the technology. When they say me, I, I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's actually the open source community that yeah, do right, that. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, they, they, you know and, and it's, so they can do that. They also go to www.hyperledger.org. You can always look me up on LinkedIn <laughs> if you have a real problem. Okay. So uh, you know, it's, we are very accessible. You can join a meetup. We have meetups in 175 cities. Wow. Uh, we have an Indian chapter. We have a China technical working group. Oh, right. We have we have different working groups for identity and all the different other areas. And we have SIGs on different industries. And we just create the platform, and others have come and use those. So certifications. We talked about this. Looks like this appeals to a lot of developers, coders. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, are there other opportunities for market strategies, strategy and development business analysts that you have resources for? Um, one, two, are there certifications, this, jumping, back, jumping back to the yeah. coders and developers, yes, are there, there certifications that you would recommend right now, 2019, 2020, 2021, that they actively engage themselves in to take part of all of the platforms that you're building? Yeah, so, so, we, so we have a certification we just announced. We have two certifications, one for, for two of our, one for each of our platforms, 15 platforms, two of those platforms. One is for Sawtooth, one for Fabric. Okay. And we have an administrator. Because we identified, because in the end we're looking at mission critical system. These are production and enterprises, wow. right? Okay. So we perceive that the administration role, it's not just administrating your own systems, you're administrating a, a network of different company systems. Oh. So we have an administration course. We have one for Fabric, okay. and you've become certified, and you have one for Sawtooth. We will have developer ones for Fabric and Sawtooth, and I think Aroa, and there's other ones coming along. We're developing those. And if you're an organization, a service provider, if you have three of uh, members of your employees who are certified, you then become a Hyperledger certified solution provider. And well, we, just announced, we just announced that. So IBM is a, uh, Accenture, uh, and finance was Alibaba, oh, uh, wow. but Beijing Peersafe and a company called Chain Yard, okay. which is based out of North Carolina and Corella. And we see a lot more of those. So I think there's going to be a lot of demand as the, these systems, as they become more and more mission critical, as the, these applications mature, like any system, you know, you, any banking system, any system that you use, you expect uptime, you expect availability, you expect right. that environment. It's the same as any other system. Everyone's always saying, what about cybersecurity? Well, it has to be the same. You have to make sure you have five, you have to have the same infrastructure in place. Okay. So we have to need those skill sets. We have those skill sets of cybersecurity out there. We're now helping people know how to administrate and run these kind of uh, blockchains. And if you have that administrative exam, I think it's very useful for other companies. Absolutely. So they want to get certified or do that. So okay. you, you can do that. Go to our course. I think you can become a training partner and do that as well. There's, there's all kinds of ways. Well, this is really set up for the community. Okay. Yes, I, we've done that. I we did it for kudos. Kubernetes. Yeah. These guys were no Kubernetes. We did it for Kubernetes, CNCF. We've done it for many other Linux Foundation projects. Wow. So I, my, my last question is, in developing technology, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's software, hardware, middleware, there always seems to be a challenge between the end consumer, yeah. the development team, the design team, and the user experience. Yes. How are we mitigating those cha the cha that challenge with all of those silos as you build out all of these resources Where's the connecting piece? Because you're talking a, literally a different language. Yeah. You're teaching a different yeah. language to coders. Where are the middle middlemen to the, the world? Yeah. Because we're expect now we're expecting the rest of the world to just adopt now. Yeah. From the strength. Where's the rest? The strategy, the solution around bringing in the world and saying a more uh, user-friendly environment on a very rudimentary level. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. So I did a degree in the, 19, the early 80s as my degree on systems analysis. And systems analysis was all about how you connect business with technology, right? Because, you know, technology will just make the modern system just faster. Right. But actually, you should redesign. You turn physical to logical, redesign logical back to physical. So it's, it's, it's the age old problem. I was a COBOL programmer. I've done all the different, I've been a right. business, I've done it all, right? So you need, it's, 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 it, this is not unique. This is, this is the challenge of technology since problem. the beginning. Of the guy who designed uh, you know, Chernobyl but didn't put the right kind of knobs for the user so you pressed <laughs> the wrong button, right? That was not good. The Absolutely. user interface was not there, right? It's a common problem. So you have to have individuals who can talk across uh, those cycles, who right. can talk the different languages, can understand the business, understand the technology and transfer that. Of course, today we have things like agile development to make sure these things can happen quickly. Right. But then that, there's some challenges with there's that. Challenge, it's, exactly. it's like the uh, decentralized rather control version, having the whole spec. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that that is that is the age old, and that's down to us human beings to solve that. Right. And also, human beings love to silo. Any organization silos. Absolutely. You know, this department, that department. It's it's You're slower than me. You're faster right. than me. Exactly. So you've got to have exactly. a collaborative. So it's all about. I worked at HP. We're all about collaboration. That was kind of the beginning of the of the uh, Silicon Valley. Okay. And it was all about collaboration. That was the the Silicon Valley. Way, you know, you know, you empower people and do all that kind of stuff. I think having that kind of culture, so people it's can really do cool. stuff and they get involved and fix each other's problems, uh, and I think that's it. And obviously, with everything, you have to have a vision, you have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Right. So, right. how do you integrate people? So it's good to have flexible. Okay. It's, it's an art, I think. It's an art, actually, not a science. That's, that's the ultimate it thing. Truly, truly, truly is. And just have a go and have a go and a go, and you'll get better by learning with your mistakes. We let the coders handle the science. <laughs> the art is a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly, scenario. exactly. Right now, we're going to take a few questions okay. over here on D Live. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh dear. Do you see yourself <laughs> <laughs> ever walking away from blockchain technology? Do I ever see myself walking away from blockchain technology? Um, what uh, would have to happen? What would have that? to happen? That's um, an interesting one. I trip into a ditch and go in hospital. <laughs> okay, uh, let's not go I, too morbid. Just, with just, this. Too morbid. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think I think this is this is beginning of, of um, who knows? Because we really don't know. Who knows what's going to come from stage left? Right? Technology is amazing, right? Right. But I think this is a thirty-year journey, just like the internet. We're just expanding upon the internet journey. Right. So I think until the end of my career. Uh, and I'm sure during my career, my family would say, "Stop, you know, get off that phone and stop looking at the at this stuff." So no, I think this, this, I, I don't see anything in, in, in the foreseeable future. Okay. But um, you know, the one thing we can't, we can predict the future, but we don't know the future. But yes. uh, there's nothing really that, that, that that's out there. And then we've got things like you know, self-sovereign identity. All these issues we're talking about, decentralization. We've only just started this journey, right? right. And we're going to learn. So it's fascinating. This right. is truly fascinating. Why would I do anything else? I got to tell you right now, <laughs> as an innovator, as a technologist, yeah. I'm fast. Thank you for sitting down with okay. me. It's a this pleasure. Is a super exciting time for us right now. It is. The world is truly ours. And thank you for sitting with us. It's a pleasure. You guys take care on DLive. Right. We'll see you soon. All right. Cheers. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Appreciate it's a pleasure. You. Absolutely. <laughs>